Hi everyone, and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Today we're going to talk about frequency response, sound pressure level, how to achieve superior quality audio with a few tricks, and also to learn how to keep in mind how certain things should be, how they should sound, even though unfortunately our modern, modern society furnishes very low quality audio. So we have to be prepared to that. We have to know our enemy. Let's take a look. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about these little guys here. Here's a, a better image. These are super tweeters. So what are these super tweeters? Well, as you know, tweeters are responsible for reproducing in your loudspeakers the higher frequencies of your music. And usually these stop at a certain range. We'll get back to this. And the super tweeters, at that point, should deliver the rest of the spectrum of the frequencies that you're missing usually that are not delivered from the, from the normal loudspeakers and the rest of your system. Hence, a higher fidelity in your music reproduction, which I think is paramount in achieving an excellent sound quality. But before that, let's take a step backwards. We have to learn a little bit more on what we're talking about. So, first of all, human ear. That's the most common replica to everyone who says, we don't need this. This produces frequencies that the human ear cannot even hear. Well, in theory, that is true because the human ear goes more or less from 20, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 hertz, 20, 20 kilohertz. That's how you usually express yourself in these terms. So let's try to understand why this is important. Well, that's, this problem is at the base, is actually is at the solution of the famous MP3 files, which you, you are listening constantly in all your iPads, iPods, telephone cells, cell phones, computers, through Spotify and all, the, all these uh, music types, typologies of reproduction and streaming and so on. So what's the key factor of all these files? Well, they're compressed, obviously. The sound is greatly compressed. And obviously, the, the, the quality of the audio drops dramatically. How is this achieved? Well, uh, there are many types of solutions to do this, but the main fact is that MP3 files or other loss uh, Lossy, lossy quality types of files cut the higher frequency response because the human ear is not supposed to hear these. Hence, the, the, the dimension of a file can go like, for example, 30, 30 megabytes down to three megabytes. The amount of space on your hard disk is brought, is cut to almost 100%. I mean, uh, very, very much. The files are, are very, very small. And that has been at the base of the success of Apple, for example, and all the different kind of gizmos and MP3 portable players, because it was finally possible to put a lot of songs inside them, which is a great idea, which is fantastic. But we can't always listen to that stuff because that's not music. We're losing a lot of things. That's why people are going back to vinyl finally. Why, why is this happening? Because after a while, I think people are understanding that the MP3 files and all the other types of compressed files do not sound that good, or do not have all the, that quality that an analog source or also a high quality digital source have, do have. So in terms of super tweeters or other parts of your system related to frequency response, what are the benefits? Well. If you have, for example, these super tweeters, you can reach a range of 90 kilohertz, which is very, very much a very high frequency response. Why am I talking about frequency response? Why is it so important? 
Well, the key in this connected to the sound pressure level in decibels, that's another concept, is connected, they're both connected to the dynamic range. If you have a frequency, a higher frequency response, things will seem more similar to reality. Plus, there is a higher sound level pressure, which means also a higher dynamic range. Dynamic range, as we said in other videos, is the lowest and the highest peak of sound. And in a natural environment, sounds are very low or very high. And that, unfortunately, is cut off to have a homogeneous signal in CDs, in MP3 files, etc., etc. Because otherwise, these um, peaks in, in the low parts and the high registers and of frequency may disturb, may disturb the listener, may create pro problems also in the reproduction of these. So that's why, unfortunately, we have the cutting of these frequencies. We don't want that. We want those frequencies. Those frequencies give back the, I would say, almost the soul to, the mu to music. Finally, if we have those frequencies, if we have that kind of sound pressure, because if you have all those frequencies, also the pressure in your ear will change. That's important. MP3 files, you don't have that. Plus, obviously, we're gonna have a whole range of harmonics. Notes, music notes, which, which vibe with other notes, creating new nuances in music. I know this seems a little bit technical, but that's what's happening. If you cut off all these parts, we don't have that. We don't have that type of pressure. We don't have those harmonics. We don't have that dynamic range. Everything is flat. So where's the soul in our music? That's why analog is coming back. And that's why analog music sources are top. A vinyl record can go up to 60 or even less. It depends. It depends from the, from the signal. It depends how it's cut and everything. But uh, for example, a, a vinyl record can go, actually there is no limit. It can go the, the, as much as it wants in the high frequencies. The frequency response of a, of a vinyl record is huge compared to that of a CD, which is an excellent sound product, media. But unfortunately, all signals of a CD are cut off at 20 kilohertz. Cut off. So if anything that goes past there, MP3 is even lower. It changes in relation to the bit rate of each file, obviously. So the less is the bit rate, the less um, kilohertz you're gonna have there. Cutting, cutting, cutting down, cutting down until the sound is, is gonna seem very poor to your ear. And finally, people are, are noticing that. Good job, people. Sorry for my voice. I have, I have some problems. I have a bad um, cold, but I'm getting better. So, important thing. If you want to put something like this in your sound system, which does cost a few hundred dollars, and I highly recommend to do that, these are the Townshed Super Tweeters. Now the, a new version has just come out, which goes even at a higher frequency range. Obviously, to do this, you need that your d different characteristics within your sound system. Otherwise, you're not gonna achieve this. So in this sense, we have to take a look at all your steps. So the first thing we have to notice, if we're talking about vinyl, is your cartridge. If your cartridge does not have that type of frequency response, if it stops at 20, which is already, 20 kilohertz is already a good frequency response. I mean, it's not nothing uh, tremendous. But if it goes higher up, a, a lot of cartridges, high quality cartridges reach 50 kilohertz in frequency response, which is also what, are, what they're calling now high resolution um, earphones, which are those who have a higher frequency response. See, even the big companies are starting to notice that. So first your cartridge has to have that capability. Moving up down, down the signal, then um, uh, since vinyl has a very large fre frequency response, we don't have any problems from that. So the cartridge after the cartridge, your phono preamp. If your phono preamp does not have those characteristics, the higher frequency are gonna cut off there. So you have to make sure that your phono preamp has a, a good dynamic range in that sense, a fre good frequency response. After that, the receiver, the amplifier, also as well, must be capable of doing that, of delivering that high frequency response. Even if it doesn't have that possibility, it'll benefit from a 
higher quality signal. Don't, don't worry with that. But it's good to say that all these passages in your system must be able, be capable of accepting that kind of signal. And last but not least are your loudspeakers, which almost all loudspeakers go around 20, 25 kilohertz maximum. That's where the, the sweet super tweeters come in, which uh, are directly connected to, your, uh, to the cables behind to your loudspeakers and gather higher or even lower frequency response, which normal um, loudspeakers do not have and deliver that. In terms of digital uh, sources, uh, we must go to other types of media. For example, super audio CDs for DVD audios, Blu-ray audios, those have a, a very good sound level pressure, even higher than, um, than vinyl actually but that's the sound level pressure, the decibels. We're talking about frequency response. The frequency response instead is very bad, is very limited, it's cut, is artificially cut off. Although in a, in a CD, in a super audio CD, in a DVD audio, et cetera, et cetera, the frequency response is much higher. So at that point, it, is, it does have a, a meaning to, to buy something like that, even if you don't have a vinyl setup. Well, that's about it. I wanted to talk about these important topics. I hope you understand them. Please post a comment here below. I'll, I'll try to answer. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel and hope to see you soon. Bye guys.